Hello everybody, I'm Rick and in this video I want to talk about how you can design modern day applications with scaling in mind and I'm going to explain how we're scaling services nowadays. This video is part of my general software engineering content so if you don't want to miss any episode please subscribe and ring the same notification bell to get notified when I upload a new video. It's no secret that software engineering and solution architecture just aren't what they used to be 10 to 15 years ago. A single monolithic application and a SQL server just aren't enough to launch a business that is expected to handle hundreds or even thousands of requests per second. There are many reasons that make monolithic applications a thing of the past, but one of them is the way they scale. In order for me to explain how you can scale modern day applications and microservices, I need to briefly cover how we used to scale monolithic applications, or at least how we tried to. I'm going to leave databases outside of this video just because I think they deserve their own scaling video, so stay tuned for that. Now, monolithic applications are applications that instead of doing one thing only, they're doing pretty much everything that the solution requires them to do in a single code base. That might include the front end, the back end, also some background tasks like email sending and scheduling. Not only is that hard to manage, but it's also very expensive to scale. Since everything lives in a single code base, it needs to be deployed as a single application in one server. In order to scale such an application, you would need to provide more CPU, RAM and disk size to this server or get a new one which is better. This process is called scaling up or vertical scaling. However, CPU and RAM are getting very very expensive the higher you go and the problem with that is that they have a fixed ceiling of scaling. This means that you cannot actually get past the best CPU or the most amount of RAM or a server motherboard can handle and they get very expensive as you go. How can we solve this? Well, we have actually already solved it. We are turning the scaling angle by 90 degrees. Instead of trying to scale up by throwing more resources to a single application instance, we will instead scale out by running more instances of the same application. This however means that we won't be able to stick with a monolith for this approach to be effective. We technically could, but we really shouldn't be doing that and I will explain why. Breaking a monolith to microservices or just developing microservices from the beginning is very important for the scalability of our system. A microservice is a service that is supposed to be doing one thing only within our solution. An example of a microservice would be something like a service bus consumer that gets order messages and converts them into database entries or a REST API that has all the functionality related to the basket in the context of an e-commerce solution. By designing the system in that way, not only you can decouple and abstract part of your applications that don't need to know about each other, but we also allow different parts of our solution to run at a different scale since they no longer have to run under the same rules in the monolith server. They don't even have to be written in the same programming language and they are often not since we tend to use the best tool for the right job. So like I already mentioned, scaling out is the process in which an application can handle more load by running more instances of itself. Let me explain this with a simple example. Let's say that we have an API in our system that is running in a single instance in a single server in London. The application can currently handle a hundred requests per second, but the sales team comes in and they say that they managed to get a good client on board and now the API needs to handle double that traffic. What do you do? If I follow the scale up scenario, I will need to buy double the RAM and double the CPU, assuming that the CPU and RAM weigh the same in terms of scaling, which usually they're not, in order for me to handle double the traffic. However, if I do that, I probably won't get all the way up to 200 RPS, maybe closer to 180. And this is because after some point, scaling up has some diminishing returns, and these diminishing returns become higher the higher you go. As you can tell, this isn't good enough for what we need. And it's also not a good approach because it requires us to do modifications on the hardware, which running a single instance can actually cause downtime. Let's see how we would horizontally scale the application instead. Instead of doubling the server specs, I would actually get a second server with the same specs and run a second instance of my application there. This would also double my cost, like the previous solution, but the outcome would be resilient, highly available, and it would allow me to do zero downtime deployments. And it also has the potential to be geo-redundant as well. Let's take a closer look at those buzzwords and let me explain what they are because they are very important. First, let's just address the elephant in the room. If one API in one server of n specs can handle 100 requests, then two APIs in two servers of n specs can handle 200 requests. There are no diminishing returns and the scaling is very straightforward to understand. 
In the context of an API, all you need for this to work is a load balancer on top of the APIs. A load balancer, put very simply, is a service that acts as the top layer of how traffic gets to the services and its responsibility is to determine which of the instances at your scaled out applications should handle the requests. Load balancers have many features that enable us to achieve our scaling and availability targets. For example, they can automatically detect when an API is not able to handle requests and it automatically reroutes the traffic to a healthy instance to prevent any downtime. Resilience and high availability are almost synonymous in solution architecture. High availability is a characteristic of a system which aims to ensure an agreed level of operation performance, usually uptime, for a higher than normal period. Have you ever heard the phrases four nines or five nines? These numbers represent the availability of a service. If a service, for example, has four nines, that means that it can be up to 52 minutes down per year. With a single instance running, these numbers are simply numbers you cannot achieve. If the server goes down, your monolithic application goes down with it, then you cannot handle any requests, period. If on the other hand, you have multiple instances of an application within a server, then your service is locally redundant and more available than having a single instance. Now, if we take this a step further, we can have multiple servers within a single region, such as Europe, running multiple instances of our application. And this is what we call zone redundant. Now, let's take it a final step further and say that we run multiple instances of the application in multiple servers in multiple regions, for example, North Europe and West US. Now, we are geo-redundant or geo-zone redundant. This is probably the highest level of availability that you will see around and can increase depending on how many more regions we deploy to. At this point, however, the downtime risk is minimized so much that the only reason why you would go further is because you wanna serve lower latencies to the traffic that's coming from these regions. Scaling out also allows us to do zero downtime deployments. When deploying a scaled out application, you're able to keep at least one instance running, which is able to handle all incoming traffic while you're deploying, and then gradually replace all the others. When they're finished deploying and they're up and running again, you just redirect the traffic to them, and then you replace the remaining ones that run the old version. Does this sound complicated? Well, that's because it is. Ultimately, you don't want to be doing any of this manually. There are already solutions that can handle all that for you. Services such as Kubernetes, ECS, Azure Service Fabric or Service Fabric Mesh can take all the pain away and manage all that for you without you having to manage any of the infrastructure or the deployment process. Now, this is all infrastructure part, but infrastructure is half of the equation to allow your applications to actually scale out. Because if it was that easy, you would just scale out your monolith. The problem with that is that most monoliths are not stateless. Statelessness is something extremely important that you need to understand and it is what's enabled scaling past the infrastructure part. You have probably heard the words REST API, statelessness, idempotency and session. These are words related to how we scale out our applications. In order for our APIs to scale out effectively, they need to be stateless. That means that they shouldn't be keeping any state in memory from one request to the other. This is one of the reasons that REST APIs are actually very popular. They are designed to be completely stateless, which allows them to scale out very effectively. From JWT or JOT-based authentication and authorization that allows us to use self-contained tokens for auth, to a completely sessionless model, our application can scale out without us worrying that the traffic needs to be handled in a very specific way. I'm not saying that in order for you to have APIs that scale out, you need to have them to be REST APIs but they do need to be stateless. This of course means that any authorization should be a separate service on its own, such as Identity Server or Azure Active Directory, or the one of your choice. Of course, APIs are only part of the services that you will be running. Console applications and background workers are also microservices that you will be running. These usually consume messages from queues or events from Kafka, and so on and so forth. In order for them to be able to scale out, they should allow for the concept of competing consumers. For example, if I have a console app that is consuming a service bus queue and I want to consume double the amount of messages per second, all I have to do is create a second instance of the exact same app and it will automatically scale out for me. The reason why this will work out of the box is because the Azure Service Bus service and the SDK itself that Microsoft provides are programmed to allow for multiple instances of the consumer to run without having to deliver the messages on every single one of them. 
Instead, what will happen is the messages will be automatically delivered only in one of the two and the service is aware of where it's delivering the messages. Of course, if one of the consumer goes down and the message hasn't finished processing, the message will be replayed to a healthy consumer. It is generally a good idea to always code safeguards in your consuming services to be able to handle the scenario of a message or event being processed twice by both applications. Even though uncommon, it can happen, so make sure that all these types of applications are idempotent. Scaling is, in fact, not easy, and the hardest transition in my career was to move from a monolith application that was deployed in a single server to hundreds of microservices that are being deployed independently and managed by different teams throughout the company. It is all worth the effort, and the reward far outweighs the investment of understanding and implementing them. That's all I had for you for today for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.